All right, I think we should get started. So I think everybody got the link to the notes. I'll drop it one more time in there just in case. And let's talk about the spreadsheet. There is the link to the spreadsheet. I'm going to try to share my screen. Hopefully that'll make life a little bit easier. Although I'm not gonna be able to see people if they raise their hands. So I'll have to ask you all to help me out with that. You could just move the uh, participants window to a different monitor like I do. So when I share my screen, the participants window shrinks down to a little teeny tiny sliver. You can exit Which, full screen, hit view and exit full screen, and then you can monkey around with it again. Or you can just live in one screen. I'm on multiple screens. I just the, the, the window shrinks down and I cannot expand it. Which is confusing. But that's not your problem. That's my problem. Computer. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. <laughs> F11 works. Sometimes F11 will give you a full screen. Maybe not. Oh, man. Gonna have, if I disappear, it's Judy's fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I put a couple of things into this first one just as a first pass to see if the matrix made sense. It is making mostly sense to me. Um, and all that I've done so far is, so I just skipped over the SKF 159 labs that need to be sorted. <laughs> um, because someone else probably knows those better than I do, and they're not hyperlinked. Um, but I've taken some of the courses that were at the bottom of that and from uh, Wheeler's working doc, but I haven't gotten all the way through the working doc. Um, but so far, the personas matrix is working for me. Um, that's all I have to say so far. All right, let's walk across the, uh, the spreadsheet and just validate that everyone is cool with what we've got in each of the columns. Anybody has any suggestions, it's time to speak up. Uh, so we threw an ID number in the first column. That should not be too controversial. We have the title hyperlinked to the source in the second column also should not be too controversial. Uh, column C is content type. So if I jump over here, currently content type is what we have listed in column A. Uh, as a general statement before we get into some of this, I, I, I would again um, suggest that we try and, and make this as, as simple and general as possible, um, just to make our lives a little bit easier and make this whole thing a little bit uh, more flexible. That being said, what do we feel about the content type? Do we think that uh, the list we've got there is, is good to start? Is there anything on there that we think can be combined or needs to be separated? Seen a couple of is everybody cool? If no one has any major concerns, with that. <clears throat> hands Guy on Randall. and code, code challenges are kind of the same. Yeah, they're all hands on experience. What if we change it to hands on slash coding slash lab? That works, yeah, yeah. That's saving electrons. Hey, you got to save those ones and zeros where you can. All right, get rid of that. Challenges might be a better word than coding. Maybe that's just me reading it. What do we hands think? On we'll just go to hands-on lab. Yeah, just that, yeah. Just hands-on lab? Like yeah. That? I like that. That's even, that's even less. <laughs> There we go. It's um, <laughs> really command line approach. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a question. What's the difference between a video and a presentation or a conference talk? And a webinar for that. For that. And, and a webinar for that matter. I think we can delete the video because there's a difference between a presentation, like a conference talk and a webinar. 
Well, those... well, I guess it. What about slides? Like you know how some people just share slides, but they don't have a video. Isn't that a presentation? That's guides documentation. I'm good with guides and documentation. Yeah. So get rid of video. Yeah. So, uh, maybe we title that live presentations conferences and then below static guides and talk and documentation what do you think about that sure i'm good with that. yeah because a lot of like the skf stuff has both of those they've got like right like a walkthrough and then a demo or a hands-on demo and so i'd love for people to be able to like skip over the section of training if they just want to do the demo for a cert so i want them tagged that should be possible yes we have a labs menu and then we're we're gonna start trying to embed labs into the respective sections of content where they're relevant cool awesome all right so the other one that i wanted to ask about is uh project do we need to keep project as its own thing and if so can i get rid of the example for the sake of brevity. Do we have an example we can look at to see how are it's different lab, from other things? Are project labs, like are they interactive labs? Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, like interactive, you have the user has to do something other than that, you're just watching a presentation or going through slides. Um, hackathon is kind of interactive you have to do something okay how about skill-based project um is that what this would be defined as because we've got demos which is me repeating somebody else's work but a skills-based project implies that i've done something new with knowledge i i, I think we're gonna like so in so oswap this... yeah, go ahead no, actually, go ahead. Yeah. In OSWAP, what they have is projects. I can send you a demo, for example, of what somebody just submitted to SKF. Um, but like it's, for example, like this guy did another front end for like the requirements tool. So you can go, he has a project where you can go in there, select a bunch of like things like my app is going to do this. And basically it generates a requirement like tool so that's what they would define as projects is people doing stuff like that so uh professional security training vendors like security journey once you reach a certain level they ask for you to demonstrate a skill yeah so um, you know, here's what your objective is go ahead and code it and then that project is turned in and reviewed for uh, completeness. So yeah, I, I think we need to keep it. Um, I, I would like to get rid of the example and maybe we can figure out a way to rephrase it. Somebody is had a better suggestion before. Is that materially different than a hands-on lab? I mean, at the end of the Material, day, I understand. Very materially different. It's so it, it, it's exactly what they just said. So this would be the capstone essentially. So yeah. after they've done the hands-on, I need them to be able to, can they drive it without autopilot on? <laughs> And if not, I can't cert them. So that I would see, I would say that's a skills-based project or skills demonstrating project. Do we like project or like skills-based project? I like skills-based project. Yeah. Um, and I also like to add, you know, slash capstone. I think that. Yeah. And what I really love about this is that that is like that capstone project. If it's tied back to OS, I can reward and incentivize. So I would love that. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you're if we are going to include skill based project and people are going to have to submit something. We have to. We have to. Because that's. I mean, honestly, that's how this has to be fundamentally different. There's okay. so many curated training resources right now, and no one can get jobs because no one can demonstrate yeah. skill without being in a job. That's our biggest gap. So yeah, it's going to be read all over the place. Okay. Did we say earlier we want to get rid of webinar? We're include that in live presentation. I, can we call that technical technical webinar? Because for me that is distinctively different from a live presentation. Because like 
live presentations can be good, valuable content generally. But when I'm seeing a technical demo uh, webinar, it's for a technical outcome. Any your thoughts on that? Technical webinar is fine. Okay. I think we understand the concept. If we need to refine the specific word later, I don't think that'll kill us. Yeah, I just want to make sure we've got the, the buckets. I think we understand the defined. category. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, we have demo. Is demo different than a technical webinar? Or live presentation or hands-on hands -on lab? Mm -hmm. It'd be very similar to a hands-on lab. Maybe you could do like hands-on lab slash demo. Well, look, why don't we just, okay. So I'm gonna recommend that we move the label of demo so that we enable ourselves to have a direct pathway from what I would recommend, right? Is like blogs entry to a live presentation on context, goes to a webinar on the subject, goes to a hands-on lab, goes to a skills-based project. So I want them to have exactly the skills that they need and then to immediately transpose that onto a new domain. So if we remove demo and understand that the hands-on lab will be sort of the third step of a four-part training process to accelerated technical skill, we're set. Any other thoughts on In that? my mind, the only thing where it differs, Saul, is you know those people that record like their terminal so you could like replay their terminal yeah but i call that a technical webinar because that's static mm. static even if they don't content. talk yeah so for me the fundamental difference is that if it's static <laughs> this is the cognitive engineer in me if it's static streamed content that's going to have a very different memory impact than a hands-on lab which is why i'm labeling them so differently mm -hmm. so yes they would do mm -hmm. the demo first or sort of watch someone but I want to like limit the security training journey to getting hands on keyboards fast. Fair. So we're getting rid of demo. I think so. Yeah. And, and also, some slides. learners aren't necessarily going to go down the hands on path. They just need to understand the concept and be conversant. Yeah. Podcast is a podcast different than a live presentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to leave that on its own? It's kind of yeah. in the cluster category of like blogs and podcasts. Um, but I, we yeah, we got to label it separately. Do we combine blog and podcast together or leave them separate? I, I would not. They're, yeah, we can leave them separate. Okay. And then I think we said earlier hackathon was very similar to a hands on lab. Thoughts about getting or a skills based project? Yeah. 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 So there, I would say maybe we should consider these as there's contextual content, which is blogs, webinars, statics, well, not statics, just the general content. Then we've got our sort of four part pathway where you'd go to like a webinar presentation, hands-on lab skills based. And then I think the hackathons are kind of, does hackathon make sense? objectively with the part one curation part of this. I think a hackathon is an implementation and it would be tied to maybe a way to coordinate a bunch of skills-based projects, but I don't see that actually being tied into the curation of da like data objects, essentially, which is what this is aimed mm -hmm. at. I think that's a fair point. I'm fine with nodding. That. Okay, so. Let me see if I can fix this, put that there, get rid of that. And we're gonna sort these because data should always be sorted. Okay. Content While we're here, type. let me share this. So last year I was running like a security type of club for the University of California, Irvine. And we had a lot of people sign up from like all over the U.S. that were all in all sorts of diff different degrees of security training. Um, I just want to share this, that a lot of people have this ideology that they never have to learn coding in security. And it was really hard sometimes to get people to understand fundamentals that were just because they were in terminal and people were like, no, it needs to have a UI. Yeah, so. well, okay, so I'm also kind of thinking, 
um, that a persona we're not considering here is that level of learner. So there's a good amount of like management material out there that we could bring into this, like DevSecOps management. But also I think something that I would love to see, and this is just a me note and wouldn't happen in year one and probably not even on this track, but like I was talking to a bunch of policymakers about AI and ML and open source on Monday and I couldn't, it was awful, it was awful. And I came up with Aww. this metaphor and I hope they weren't too offended, but I was like, it's like, you're all trying to regulate the automotive industry, but you're all pathologically afraid to learn how to drive a car. This is so stupid. Step away from my machines. So yeah, I think maybe uh, there's not a lot of cluster of education around that, which is why I'm still having to sit my body on panels. But if I can pull some together, a like policy CISO, OWA, not OWAS, OSPO person, uh, persona might be something we're missing for this. Uh, we are missing that, yes. Which is a great segue into the next set of columns, which is the personas. Cool. I actually like the new graduate persona you had, Saul, because I would actually put those people, because there's other talks that I've had in Gen 2 about how se the term of security has changed over the years and your education like in your definition of security really depends on what year you kind of went to school and when yeah. you learned all this i know somebody that's doing a keynote on that topic next week oh yeah i wonder I, who I that might be get the details on that <laughs> <laughs> well yeah um if you have a video crop i'd like to see it after yeah it'll be it's a gonna be a panel but yes very cool. panel keynote because i'm lazy <laughs> But yeah, I would argue that because I've, I've legitimately had people like break down and yell at me that so-and-so told them and promised them that security didn't involve coding. And that yeah, Glenn lie. was like, this is completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is not acceptable, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my question around personas, um, Sal, you had changed on the... Uh, matrix tab and you added in app security down to new security mm -hmm. persona. And I'm fine with those categories, but they we've, I think we've lost things like we just identified um, OSPO yeah. uh, executive, um, even our, we originally, this whole group at the very first meeting was talking about, how do we help college students? How do we help primary and secondary education students? How do we help people that are changing careers? And I don't see how the things you have listed address those perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. So I think just one clarification here, and then I think all we need is a clarification on another column. So we're gonna need two separate matrices. And I think we're under scoped on the way that we're defining right now, the learner level and audience. Mm -hmm. So this, we need both of those matrices together. I think if we have this yeah. matrix, as many percent as we can, that is our end point to the kind of education we need at the end of two years. Um, but right now we really, and I think this is kind of the bummer here, I'm really struggling to get us those like long range like to even get us that full app sec from right maybe even high school all the way up because we're missing a lot of those resources but for that could we just make the learner level in column p more nuanced it's open right source now, we can do whatever we want yeah because right now it's just beginner intermediate etc and we could make mm -hmm. this the like student new grad um, and then, yeah. and then I kind of think, <laughs> I kind of think the persona of, um, like career changer can just be slash OSPO. Cause that's sort of the same knowledge. They kind of need a bucket of everything, but not super high level. OSPO has <laughs> only been a thing for like a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> but let me, let me also say this, cause we ran into this at SKF is at what point, because like. For example, a lot of people coming into the industry don't have basic skills like batch scripting. So at what point do we like say like this isn't something we're going to cover? 
because if you don't well, know bash scripting it's going to be really hard for you to do well, and i also don't want to get into ip subnetting uh, right but there's a lot of things that exist within the security domains uh that we don't necessarily want to focus in on i mean yeah, and right. we'd say hey if you're curious about this uh, go talk to the cisco academy or whatever well and, we've been thinking about and this is one thing that came up as a suggestion from an oswap or Os i don't know how to pronounce it correctly i keep changing the pronunciation OWASP. OWASP. but it's glenn keeps telling me it's wrong but <laughs> well he's dutch and it's very <laughs> yeah. clearly a wasp is their mascot <laughs> I, yeah, I did a talk man. for OWASP last night and they pronounced it OWASP. So yeah. I think we're good. A nasty <laughs> little bug. But they're so helpful. You're right. But um what I was gonna Who's say was um it, it's just it's it, it's it's yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say, but uh, it, <laughs> but yeah, you get my it's early, it's like six a.m. for me, so well, and, and I have it. I've been up all night retooling LLVM on Gen two. So, and I think yeah. from like an SKF perspective, you know the the career paths or career types Sal has listed here under personas on the matrix tab. I don't yeah. know that you are as interested about that. Okay, you know, you're focused on the content, and eventually we will figure out. Oh, we need to borrow, you know, these three labs and this podcast and this class. And that makes endpoint mobile security training. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. We were going to link to MDN. To what? MDN, Mozilla's web documentation. Okay. Yeah. Because cool. they're open source. They're, they, they cover very basic topics in detail. Um and yes, that's what I think uh, one of the, our people suggested. We have yet to really talk about it, but that was one of the suggestions of how to handle that. And, and what would doing that uh, achieve for us? Well, if we start talking about things that are not defined, for example, acronyms and whatnot, that then yeah, they it can- just gives us another massive repo of curated content that will be maintained. Um, yes. Mozilla actively maintains a massive educational portal that's angled. I would say that their Mozilla educational content, it's kind of in our gap space of that early career. It's usually targeted towards onboarding more so. Mm -hmm. Correct. If we can API to that, great. And again, they maintain, so. <laughs> Sounds like so, we need so. to make sure we had, add that to our resource list. Yeah, so how, um, but do we need to have a conversation about with them about hooking up first or? Eventually, no. yes. Well, eventually, yes. pretty open. Like to talk they're to pretty them. open source about it too, though. Just for yeah, if, if I may pull us back to the uh, information on the spreadsheet for now, I, those, are, those are good call outs. If you please like to add those into the agenda uh, so we don't forget to, uh, to follow up on those different things, I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to pull us back to the, the task at hand here um, for the personas that we have listed. I think from what I'm hearing, generally speaking, we have agreement on these. I had one suggestion, which is very nitpicky. Instead of saying new security persona, say other security persona. So okay. people don't misunderstand that. Oh, I'm a new security person. So that's me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, I, I have no issue with these personas. Does anyone have anything they'd like to, to change or, or add to what's listed here? Um, I don't know that our purview is churning out um, identity and access man. Being a 20 year veteran of identity and access management, um, I don't feel that our purview is necessarily uh, creating more of me. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to, I'm happy to take it's, it out. It's, it's definitely topics. We, we have to talk about authentication, Ooh. authorization, multi-factor. Yeah, we have to talk about all those things. It's always in things, but it's never the single topic of, so I'm happy to remove that as an identity. Yeah. And I think it's more of, it needs to be included in the domains of things we're educating on. Yeah, I think that's fine. Then like advanced detection and response. So you're talking about threat hunting. Yeah, so these were, I mean, these, so this list came out of the types of things that we'd want to reward and incentivize. So I think we can and consolidate, I can keep the more minutia list, but we can consolidate these genuine personas, not just education. Um, 
I have an I have input. Could cloud and network? I mean, they're they're kind of some the I would same. Keep those, I want to keep those separate. I do think those are separate, but I kind of think it's not totally the same. But cloud and uh, supply chain can be will be <laughs> going more together over time. But I would keep them separate for now. Um, Okay. I mean, I definitely recognize these as roles and you know specific areas of training we want to provide to people, but I don't personally see them as personas per se. Yeah, and we need to get this to the point where I would be comfortable pursuing this work on the spreadsheet if I know that in a year's time I have a table that anyone else can read that says these are the personas we targeted. So yeah, help me to make these as identifiable as possible. All right. But for the purpose of the spreadsheet, I think these are fine to, to leave as is so, and as we start tagging so we can continue momentum. Sounds good. And then I'd recommend on the other side, instead of a drop down menu, we just create a separate sort of matrix that identifies the core key audiences so that we can do the same and say it can be multiple. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with adding that. Better fidelity is easier to get done in one pass. All right, uh, I would like to skip over stack language momentarily and talk about column O, which is content theme. Um, Kerb and I had some conversations around this the other day. Uh, we have a proposal we'd like to pitch to the group here um, as far as changing this from content theme to domain. And Kerb, did you want to discuss? Yeah, if you go to the last tab. There you go. So within the world, there is a cybersecurity education organization called ISC Squared. They produce a certification that is uh, incredibly well peer-reviewed, continually updated called the CSSLP. Mm -hmm. And they arrange application security into eight domains. And this is uh, informed, they have academics, industry people, um, it's very well uh, reviewed and maintained. So my proposal is uh, for content theme, we organize off of these domains and I show you below here um, on the XREF tab, the first uh, within column uh, E. Yeah, so column E right there. We all talked about those, the first uh, 15 things there where we, we like those, those were things we wanted to uh, talk about. So go over to domain mapping and I show you how all that aligns to the eight domains. Cool. And then uh, Glenn and Randall have been talking about ASVS. So I took that content and that's all the things highlighted in green and show how it lines up with uh, the domain model. Oh, and, pardon me? Dope. Yeah, <laughs> and if you, uh, like, look at column F, for example, in all of our conversations, we seem to have a gap. We don't talk about life cycle management at all. So we don't talk about dependency management. Uh, we're not talking about curating anything. We're not talking about having a update policy or you know, how to get things out into the world. So, you know, you, leveraging this model, I think we can quickly see where we have a lot of content. So like the ASVS. ASVS stuff, which is predominantly what's already in SKF. Um, so we have a lot of content around doing the coding thing, but we don't have a lot of content around uh, like architecture and requirements, for example. We, have we, we actually, a SKF does have requirements. Cool. And I know David had talked about, David and I have talked a lot about uh, security architecture principles in the year. So I know we have, uh, information there we can leverage. But you know, if we go with the domain model and categorize things here, so categorize it at the broad level, and you can see that the secure software implementation and programming bucket, we have a lot of available content in that category. So we're not losing that information, but we're able to kind of up-level things to speak generically to a category. Okay. So what's everyone's thought about that proposal? 
I think that sounds very good to me. And then we can just make it in the spreadsheet so that as soon as I choose the broader category, I can only choose from the sub ones and then yeah. Yeah. no data curation issues. Thank you. Um, I think I could use from SKO, like um, if we can hyperlink or what is the best way? Because right now uh, there's 159 labs that I do not have. <laughs> How can I sort those more easily? Uh, Glenn is on this call. <laughs> he's not on? Yeah, he's on. Hey, Glenn. Show. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. I, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, I never see that picture of you. You look so professional. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, with other words, you don't recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> you look very relaxed whenever I see you, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, so the question itself, would you repeat it one more? You wanted to sort it or well yeah no i mean it just came up in this call like we there's a couple of things that we think we have gap to, gaps to which may be in in your training already but right now i'm personally having a hard time searching through the sko stuff to find it based on these searchables um is there a better way to search through your system because right now we just have all of the labs on a spreadsheet without hyperlinks yeah um no i think at the moment not the idea was actually like Randall already mentioned in the call to link them to the specific course material for example from uh, david wheeler to start with mm -hmm. uh, we do have a spreadsheet where we actually correlated them all with the testing guide uh, so that is more the uh, offensive security part and security testing so that, that area we, we already mapped, but we uh, also need to do similar for the ASPS uh, and thus also all the categories that you see here. Uh, but that is uh, something that we are yeah, busy with actually. But for the testing guide, we, we have it. So the uh, offensive security part. So I will probably uh, look up the link, the Excel that we created and uh, try to share it in a moment. Uh, at least then you see what the coverage is from uh, yeah, the, the, the testing guide, the offensive uh, part. Sounds good. So in other words, so we cover it both ways. We cover it from the point of view of you as a developer and like blue team. And then we also cover it like if you're testing for it, which would be red team. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So I, I believe, hopefully that, that, that thread has been answered. I believe that we've agreed. I didn't see anyone else Correct. raising yeah. their hand about the, uh, the domains. Does anyone have any additional feedback on that? All right. So I think it's a great idea. This domain. Why recreate the wheel when somebody is already wearing exactly. it? Wasting yeah, a lot of time I mean, making it for you. Like by using that, you can follow the whole uh, development life cycle, which I think is really like makes sense to a lot of people because they can insert themselves into a, which area is relevant to them. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bump the domain category over here to the left of stack language. When we're done, yeah, and, and I'll be, I will change it to shift it to be. We'll have everything, the domains listed that we can go off and do tick boxes on. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, now for learner level, again, I think we agreed that we were going to um, switch this up into more of a matrix style like we do with personas. I think the, I think the ask, Sal, that, that you brought up is to make it a little bit more uh, granular than we've got for beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yeah, and we've defined those. I think in plan one, if we're defining personas. Um, let me see what I can bring up. Sorry, all my computer is going very slow today. Same. Uh, one, three. Yeah, we missed a bunch of a couple of these too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, these are them. <laughs> oh, 
why my computer's slow is because I have every working group in SIG I have open with all the repos, all the issues, all the artifacts and different tabs. You just like having 57 tabs open. I just don't <laughs> like having to find them. Like, <laughs> ah, there it is. It's already open. All right. Well, so I, did what I just I, do there, is that correct? Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. So are we okay with those as learner levels? I think so. I mean, we've discussed this before. So this is this is out of a few chats. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. And maybe like, for example, like compliance, maybe we change that to like manager OSPO type thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Any other feedback about learner levels? I think that's good. As long as that's, yeah, that'll be a matrix style on this page. Yeah, do you want that as tick boxes too? Yes, please. I'll have to I'll put a comment in there for that. So, all right. All right. So let's jump back here to uh, column N. We have listed here as stack language, which corresponds to what we have in column B right now on the XREF table. Not everything is going to have a language, obviously. Right. So how, how, do we need to add more information to this? Do we need to, to adjust the uh, the intent of this column or do we just leave it blank for things that are not language based? Uh, this was fine, but I do think we need to have a both a one for no language and multi-language because that's, I couldn't for several of these define it because it had both like Java and Python. Okay. David in the past also suggested pseudocode. And I think I don't know. You know, if we have agreement on, I'm sorry, go ahead, Glenn. No, I want to say pseudo code. Yeah, I, I get the idea, but you know, if you really want to teach something about secure coding, you know, the devil's in the details, right? If you use uh, the load uh, safe uh, library for, I don't know, YAML uh, file loading and Python, you're good. But if you use the normal load function, right, in that library, then you're screwed. Then you have a code execution uh, when you load YAML files. I don't know True. if pseudocode is really the way no. to go. Let's leave it out. Plus, I mean, we're trying to be very clear here in establishing a sincere statistical pathway between training and employment. <laughs> and I can, yep. I can employ someone who's trained in Rust, not pseudocode. I think his I think his point was that there are examples that exist that are written in pseudocode. But and I would just call those no language and we can if we that's want to fair. and I would uh, propose since not every artifact we have is going to be directly affiliated with a language. Um, if I think we're happy with this initial list. And we always can, if there's uh, different languages or different uh, techniques, we can talk about adding that because there's plenty of space within the column to add those as we uh, start categorizing things. Yeah. But I think no language and multi-language are very useful. But you know, for talking to somebody about GDPR, uh, that's not necessarily uh, directly related to a language. Yeah, GDPR. It's the best. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Any any additional feedback on that call? All right. So then, what we've got here left is a uh, last updated, which that that's useful information to have. Someone's got to keep that updated. Someone's got to keep this updated with the last updated, which is going to be difficult with. A bazillion items, but we can worry about that Excellent. later. Sorry to go back. I'm I'm also it's my brain that's slow, not all it's uh, computer today. Did we include a space for other language to catch Go and any other things? Mm. Is that under multi language? So both yes and no. Actually, this is an open question. If we're categorizing now, the reason why only these languages are represented now is because those would be for year two. So these were the ones that we had resources for. 
do we want to put in the other languages now? Um, actually, they're also if, listed on two point one. Yeah, I, I personally think it's useful. Just yeah, because it's on the list doesn't mean we're doing anything about it yet. But yep, that eliminates cool. rework in the future. That isn't go laying down. I'm doing things. I have documentation. Because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't committed to do go if find, specifically yet. If we find something on Golang, I think we should be able to input it now, even if we're not going to use it now. That you know, if we come across something that's another language, mm -hmm. let's we're we're curating, collecting the content, aren't we? Not just so we can stash it for later. Right. Did we say it was in, uh, is this it right here? Thank you, Judy. Yes. Oh man, we don't have .NET Core. <laughs> okay, I'll add those in, the ones that aren't there once, once we're done here. Um, last call we've got on here right now is found by. What's the, what's the intent of this? I would find it useful if there was an artifact on the list and I need somebody put it there. And I needed to ask a question about it. I could go, if I was unable to find information, I could go talk to Judy, for example, if she found this. Awesome yeah, this is going to be like get blame. It's like Judy, not blame, but if I had a question, Judy keeps putting <laughs> um, miscategorizing absolutely everything. <laughs> Actually, that's a good point um, with regard to. Some of the descriptions today only for I was here I might not understand how to categorize certain things so thank you for certain explanations today so who when, when we are collecting the content I presume there's other people that are not on this call that's going to collect content does it make sense or is this complete overkill to have a slight small explanation to certain harder to understand um we're we're going to write a primer on what we mean ah. by these words. Uh, why do I should have always no probe is like 40 steps ahead of me here. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I didn't Again. say I was going to do it, but that's something we're, <laughs> going, to we're, we're going to do. It. We're. Yes. But no, that's, that's a very valid point, Judy. And I'll, you know, because this will be, we're going to have a, a, a freeze, so to speak, at some point where we stop writing content for year one, top, taking submissions, but we want to make sure that the list is always available for people to put ideas for our backlog for future work. So again, that submitted by, I think would be useful just to say, hey, Dave, what, you know, why do you think this class about GDPR is useful to us? GDPR is the best. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then we'll put it in. <laughs> Some of the major tech companies mightn't agree with you <laughs> that are based in Ireland at the moment. <laughs> five millions of dollars <laughs> because of GDPR. We won't mention any on this call. Yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe eventually this sheet gets turned into a database and we have some type of front end submission form. But uh, you know, I think today, do we think this is good enough to start moving forward once we get the cleanup on it? Yeah, I think, I think so. Ray, anybody else have uh, thoughts on that? Like I said, I think that we've accomplished what yeah. we set out to do here to, to get the, the initial version of this categorization and such put together. I yeah. think this is really helpful for collecting the information rather than just throwing it into a GDoc. So Thanks to everybody. My question is how now to, this list might get very long. It could be many duplicates. If we're all, a lot of us are just go to the same places to find our information. Is that going to be another step that we go down through it for duplicates and things like that? Or how are we going to manage that? I might name something. How are we going to manage that, Dave? <laughs> well, uh, we're, gonna, we're going to, hire a librarian next year to help manage that, right, Craig? <laughs> so for now, it's a free-for-all. Just throw everything that we find in, is it? How are we going to manage that today? Yeah. Then, yes. yes. Uh, like in the future, the librarian gets to play with those. Yeah. If yeah. we Perf can. Go ahead, Sal. Sorry, so I think if we can, um, what I'd recommend right now is that 
Um, we take, so I've started doing this, that I'm just taking the links off of all of these other uh, spreadsheets on this and putting them to this top front matrix so that we've all got the same reference number for an object. The only thing I haven't done, so SKF, if y'all could do this for your labs, just because I'm not going to commit to 159 evaluations. Um, but if we can have them with all of these indexes on them, then we're in a really, really golden spot. Um, so I, I would recommend let's use just this front matrix page. It's traceable. So even if anybody erases it all, we'll get it back. Don't worry. Um, and then my last request is that we could meet, we hold onto this submitted by column only until this becomes a like actual object living on a server, at which time I would like my provenance removed from it. So I'm not responsible for maintaining it, please. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good chat. Yeah, we're, we're not looking for long-term maintenance, but just you know, why we are uh, no, we need to figure it. this out. Yeah, and then I would say I, I, I'd love. I don't know if this will be the final format, but this matrix I want to be our current ground of truth. So this is where we're going to try to get to our matrix of actual content for now. Right. Uh, yeah, we need to have a single source of the truth. As we move forward, there's there's too many other things that are dependent upon this information. So I, I completely agree with that. Um, as we're putting together that uh, sort of primer document, um, can y'all let me know? And I'm going to put a little bit for me. I'm just putting in those paragraph statements of what the metrics are that we have and how they tie together. I have a task here on the agenda to kick that off as uh, the next step on this. So I'm sure. Sure, it'll be me next week this time. So we'll talk about it uh, at that meeting. Okay, cool. Just to clarify, Saul, you want me to take all the labs from the SKF tab and put them on this page? Um, yeah, I mean, for data, I like not hygiene, just for sanity, I would start with just like copying these columns and putting them like on top on your page and just organizing that whole subset of Cool, labs. that's what I was thinking. Cool. Yeah. And if I can ask if we could wait until Monday before we start loading a bunch of information into the sheet, uh, give give uh, myself and, and maybe Crow a chance today, tomorrow, just to get things straightened up uh, on here. I'm going to send an email out to the SIG on Monday, letting them know that the spreadsheet that we've got is the, the final version 1.0. Um, and then please absolutely feel free to uh, start loading information in here. Cool. Got it. Thank you. Can I, a quick question on that. I mm -hmm. maybe maybe I've just missed this. I thought we were going to be sent off in different directions, maybe assigned different areas so that we're not all looking at um, IS squared or or whatever your favorite uh, content is. Or is that our next step, or can we yes. will we just plow ahead? There, there's a number of folks who have asked about when they start putting information here. So I think people have data that they want to start loading in. Um, and if they want to do that, that's great. I think we should try and do some semblance of organization for, for going out to places we have not already looked at. And, and SKF obviously is covered. But like you said, Judy, I offered to do ISC squared. There's a couple other ones we had written down. So yeah, I think uh, we're going to ask people to, to go in certain places and try and reduce the duplication as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Did you want me to wait uh, on the email or the communication with Jennifer Bly for the call to add stuff to the sheet? Uh, let's wait until we get the sheet done. Like Dave mentioned, let's talk about it. Uh, he's going to send an email out Monday, you said? I'm going to send the email well, out Monday, I, I, saying the sheet's yeah. open. Okay. All right. Well, I'm already in contact with her. So there's already, I gave her something, but I will, yeah. Yeah, I, I, the sheet is not organized yet, so I don't want a mm -hmm. bunch of people in here stepping all over it that we have to do rework. Fair. So let us get that prepared, as Dave mentioned. Mm -hmm. So just let me know when we're ready to go with that. Dave will send an email. Yep, I'll send that email on Monday. Anything else to discuss today? All right, stop the share so I actually see everybody again. 
Cool. Well, hey, thank you very much, everybody, uh, for joining and participating. We, we were able to get through this. Um, very much appreciated. We'll have this wrapped up by the end of the week. Wait for the email on Monday, then proceed to add your information. And we'll talk again at the next meeting one week from now. Thanks very much. Have a good rest of the day. All right. Thank you. Cheers.